We are the only intelligent life in the known universe. I mean, imagine that we're the only place where there is intelligence in this galaxy. Astronomers throughout the world are in awe of this revolutionary discovery. The James Webb Space Telescope has captured the elusive glow of city lights an incredible 7 trillion miles distant from Earth, exceeding all expectations. This mind-blowing achievement does more than just expand our horizons in terms of what we know about the universe. Speculation runs rampant as scientists pore over the data, searching for clues that could unlock the secrets of these mysterious celestial beacons. The implications are staggering proof that we are not alone in the universe, that the universe teems with life and activity far beyond our comprehension. Is it possible that these faraway lights indicate the existence of extraterrestrial cultures? What does this mean for our knowledge of the likelihood of life in the universe beyond Earth? Join us as we explore how the James Webb Telescope just observed city lights 7 trillion miles away. Launched into orbit on Christmas Day 2021, the James Webb Space Telescope aimed to surpass the long-standing Hubble Telescope in capturing exceptionally sharp photos of newly discovered celestial objects, planetary systems, and more. A scientific objective of the JWST is to study the formation of the first galaxies by peering into the distant regions of the universe. This is feasible due to the fact that the journey time of light throughout our universe is billions of years. When the JWST gathers light, it sees these objects exactly as they were billions of years ago. Astronomers measure distances in light years, which is the maximum distance light can travel in a year. To account for this fact, the team's initial graphic made a point of emphasizing this. It was a deep field image that was presented on July 11, 2022, by U.S. President Joseph Biden while he was speaking from the White House. As the Hubble Space Telescope focused on a single area of the sky for 10 straight days beginning on December 18, 1995, deep fields gained notoriety. The chosen area was merely a microscopic dot making up around one millionth of the entire sky. The majority of the 3,000 previously undiscovered objects found by Hubble were galaxies that are located billions of light years away. With its focal point on the smack at a 723 galaxy cluster, the JWST Deep Field covers a similarly small sky area. The actual galaxy SMX the 723 is 46 billion light years away. The more distant galaxies behind it are magnified by its powerful gravitational field. The background galaxies are distorted into large arcs where the gravitational field is strongest. In one instance, it was determined that it took a distant galaxy's light 13.1 billion years to reach the telescope after traveling through space. The light that is being released stretches as the universe grows. As they are so far away, the main target galaxies of the JWST have stretched visible light from their stars into the infrared. Astronomers can directly compare JWST views with visible light photos of nearby galaxies taken by Hubble and other telescopes by gathering data at those wavelengths. This will demonstrate how galaxies develop throughout cosmic time, enlarging and consolidating into the structures we observe today. Even more astounding than the sheer number of galaxies in the JWST first deep field image is how quickly it was captured, in only hours as opposed to days. Practically wherever it searches, it cannot help but find galaxies. Galaxy clusters aren't the only objects acting as magnifying lenses. Scientists use the JWST to capture an image of a pair of galaxies designated VV1191, so they could study how the light from one of the pairs altered as it went through the other. The results of the investigation will reveal the properties of the intervening galaxy's dust. And it looks like the JWST may have just made a groundbreaking discovery light years outside our solar system. The announcement of the possible discovery of Aurora's lights on a so called brown dwarf came from the official JWST website. The absence of a host star and the frigid temperature make it difficult to pinpoint where the energy in the upper atmosphere is coming from. However, it is believed that the object releasing the auroras is really spewing methane. Simply said, an aurora on Earth is created when energetic particles that make their way into space from the sun are captured by our planet's magnetic field. The charged particles then make their way to Earth's atmosphere via lines of magnetic fields near the poles where they will collide with gas molecules to produce a beautiful display of light known as the Northern Lights. Jupiter and Saturn have similar auroral phenomena due to the solar wind, but brown dwarf W1935 has no star to orbit, so its auroras are a huge mystery.
everyone's hopes continue to rest on Proxima Centauri and Torb, just 4.4 light-years from Earth and within the Milky Way galaxy. With scientists detecting the presence of water on the exoplanet, the possibility of life on the planet can't be ruled out. Are we finally going to see evidence of life beyond Earth? Just last month, JWST found yet another supermassive black hole that was red in color and devoured everything around it. This discovery is 40 million times as big as the Sun. But what does it mean for us that the JWST has found another supermassive black hole that has been there since the beginning of the universe? It might not be good news. This monster is rapidly devouring everything in its direct vicinity. Leading the discovery are Dr. Lucas Farrow and Professor A.I. Zitrin of the Banan University of the N in Israel. According to their discoveries, the supermassive black hole is practically 40 times heavier than the Sun, making it a gigantic monster in comparison to the galaxy it resides in. Fortunately, it is not in close proximity to Earth or the solar system. We're talking quite the distance at 129 billion light years away from our planet. But it is getting closer, with the black hole devouring everything around it at a quick rate. It's where the reddish color comes from, indicating that it sits in a thick veil of dust that's obscured, curving most light from passing through. When JWST began transmitting its initial data, scientists were ecstatic. While going through the data that came in for the Uncover program, three small objects with a crimson glow attracted our attention. We instantly suspected that it was a quasar-like object, supermassive black holes at the centers of galaxies that are continuously accreting material. Because of their red dot look, the entire galaxy's luminosity can't possibly be contained within a spot no larger than a modern star cluster. We were able to obtain very precise size constraints due to the source's gravitational lensing. Even when all the potential stars are compressed into that tiny area, the black hole still accounts for at least 1% of the system's total mass. The discovery of similar behavior in multiple additional early universe supermassive black holes has shed light on the growth of both the black hole and the host galaxy, as well as the interaction between the two, which is still mostly unknown. If supermassive black holes form, for instance, from star leftovers, or maybe from primordial cosmic material that collapsed into black holes, astronomers have no idea. Also, in the pictures it transmits back to Earth, the James Webb Space Telescope is finding some other rather strange things. Every night we have the privilege of gazing into space and being enchanted by the dazzling lights of planets and stars that float across the universe countless light years away. Plus, the James Webb Space Telescope allows us to see a lot more than what our eyes can detect, like, for example, a question mark in space. For the past 20 plus months, Webb has been gliding through space transmitting back pictures of what it has found in deep space using its state-of-the-art near-infrared camera. And now answers have been given to the discovery of a rather peculiar-looking finding in one web image focusing on something completely different. The image was released by the European Space Agency, looking at two young stars as they form some 1470 light-years from Earth. However, there is a small orange mark at the image's base that resembles a flipped question mark. Obviously, the little image isn't tiny at all. In fact, it's very enormous. The question mark was captured while observing the pair of young stars, dubbed Herbig Harrow 46 to 47. Cosmic beauties, they are surrounded by massive disks of dust and gas, with the entity only a few thousand years old itself. As for the question mark shape itself, it may well look like that due to the two dimensional image that's been presented by Webb from its specific viewpoint. At this point, we don't know what it is, and without additional research, we might never know. However, the findings have been reviewed by experts in the field. Thus, it is most likely a faraway galaxy or possibly galaxies that are interacting with one another. The distorted question mark form could be a result of their interactions. Perhaps we have never seen this thing before. To determine its identity with any degree of certainty, further investigation is necessary. With the abundance of distant galaxies revealed by Webb, there is an abundance of fresh scientific inquiry. Now all eyes are focusing on a specific set of Earth-sized planets that could hold the key to finding alien life close to home. The Fermi Paradox, which highlights the absence of evidence for advanced alien life in the cosmos despite the statistically high probability that such beings exist, might finally be resolved. Where are these planets sitting? 
some 40 light years away from Earth, and the solar system is a star known as Trappist 1, which has seven planets orbiting it. In their quest to discover habitable planets, NASA takes into account a wide range of parameters. Beyond a planet's size and distance from its star, a more effective approach would be to identify the relative concentrations of these compounds in a planet's atmosphere. This would allow researchers to determine if the planet is habitable. The Infrared Spitzer Space Telescope, which is part of NASA's space exploration mission, helped find the seven rocky exoplanets orbiting the same star known as Trappist-1 six years ago. The James Webb Space Telescope has now measured the temperature of Trappist-1b, one of those worlds. The JWST has been consistently delivering noteworthy findings since its introduction, and this discovery is only the latest in a string of record-breaking firsts. This is the first detection of any form of light emitted by an exoplanet as small and as cool as the rocky planets in our own solar system. No previous telescopes have had the sensitivity to measure such dim mid-infrared light. Astronomers were ecstatic when they first learned about the seven Trappist-1 exoplanets because these faraway worlds are all around Earth's size and are in the habitable zone, the area where planets can have liquid water on their surfaces at the ideal distance from their star. They call the system a great laboratory and say it's one of the greatest places to study rocky planet atmospheres. Don't get too excited about a new world for humans yet, though. The Trappist-1 planets are out of our current reach, at a whopping 235 trillion miles away. They're also orbiting a star much smaller and redder than our sun, known as an M-dwarf star. These stars are ten times more common in the Milky Way than sun-like stars, and they have doubled the likelihood of having rocky planets as sun-like stars. These massive M-dwarfs are prime targets for habitable planet hunters, and rocky planets orbiting these dwarf stars can be more easily observed. However, there is a catch. M-dwarfs are significantly more active than our sun, and they frequently flare and emit high-energy rays, which could be harmful to emerging extraterrestrial life or a planet's atmosphere. In the past, observations of TRAPPIST-1b were not sensitive enough to rule out the possibility of an atmosphere or the planet's nature as a barren rock. Since the planet is tidally locked to its star, one side is always facing the star and the other is trapped in perpetual night. As predicted by simulations, if TRAPPIST-1b had an atmosphere, the temperature of the planet would be lower because the air would redistribute the heat around both sides. However, the JWST measured a much higher temperature, thus ruling out the possibility of an atmosphere and removing another planet from the list of potentially habitable worlds. Nevertheless, what's exciting is not so much about TRAPPIST-1b as it is the fact that the JWST can and will make such observations, allowing us to probe the atmospheres and temperatures of countless more worlds. What would life on these planets look like? The James Webb Space Telescope has decided to step into the shoes of an extraterrestrial meteorologist, engaging in some space exploration once again. The super expensive piece of space tech has been used by a team of international astronomers looking to harness its powers across the universe. It's the latest in a short but rich history of cosmic exploration, which includes taking snaps of a nearby moon that looks eerily like Earth. This is only the beginning of its galactic treasure hunt. When it comes to weather, Webb has been mapping exactly what's been going on on a massive planet some 280 light years away. That's roughly 16,464 trillion miles from Earth. The planet called WASP 43b is roughly the same size as Jupiter, dubbed a hot Jupiter by NASA after being discovered by the Hubble Space Telescope in 2011. The weather forecasts have revealed 1,250 degree heat and equatorial winds faster than 5,000 miles per hour. It had all been hidden under massive thick high clouds covering the night side of the planet. The reason behind this is that WASP-43b is tidally locked, meaning that although one side is always exposed to the light from the nearest star, the other side, which has a pristine sky, never experiences any light at all. By combining precise brightness measurements over a wide range of mid-infrared light with 3D climate models and prior observations from other telescopes, Webb was able to confirm that water vapor is present on the day side, while Spitzer and Hubble both hinted at the possibility of clouds on the night side. More accurate readings from Webb were necessary, though, before we could start to map the planet's climate, cloud cover, wind, and atmospheric composition by region. WASP-43b takes 19.5 hours to go around its star, with JWST measuring tiny changes in brightness of the planet and its neighbors. 
Webb utilized brightness data acquired by its state-of-the-art near-infrared camera to determine the planet's temperature. The quantity of mid-infrared light emitted by an object is strongly related to its temperature, which was crucial to the results for which measurements were taken every 10 seconds for over 24 hours. We were able to derive a rough map of the planet's temperature from our observations during a whole orbit, which allowed us to determine the temperature of the various sides of the planet as they came into view. The side of the planet that is continually basking in sunlight has an average temperature of almost 2,200 degrees Celsius 3,992 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hot enough to melt iron and most other metals. The dark side is significantly cooler but still boiling at around 112 degrees Fahrenheit. The rapid circulation of heated air due to supersonic winds prevents the production of methane, a stable and observable gas, on the dark side of the planet. The fact that this method of temperature mapping is possible is a clear indication of how sensitive and stable Webb is. Scientists infer from the lack of methane that WASP-43b experiences winds of magnitudes greater than 5,000 miles per hour.